I'm going to go over and talk to this guy behind the desk and see if he can find someone to pitch the car. Scotty, it's already after 8 o'clock. Even if we leave right now, we're still going to be late for my car. Laura, Laura, we can't just stand here and worry about it. Let me see what this guy has to say, okay? Excuse me, sir. Yeah, may I help you? Oh, I hope so. We just had dinner here tonight, and we were on our way back to Port Charles when something happened to the car. It just died on us. Well, where was that? It was about two miles down the, down the mountain, and we walked all the way back up here to try and find someone that could fix the well, car. I'm sorry. The only gas station anywhere near here closed at 8 o'clock. What about somebody here at the lodge? Is there anybody that knows anything about cars that could come back down there with us and take a look at it? No one I know of. Even if there were someone on staff to recommend, I couldn't spare it. We're sold out tonight. Oh, great. There is one thing I can suggest. That is, if you're not in a hurry. We're in a, what is it? We're in a big hurry, but what is it? Well, there's one gas station about 20 miles from here in Brewster. They have a tow truck. Well, I haven't got any choice. I've got the car here. Keep in case of an emergency. The number's out there. I just hope that they can get here soon. Look, Laura, I'm going to go call this place right away now. Scotty, I think we better call Rick and Leslie for his I'm sure they're still at Monica. Okay, listen, why don't you do that while I call the garage, all right? No, I'd rather that you did. They're going to be furious with me. Laura, Laura, it's not your fault. Now they'll understand. Mr. Higgins won't. When he finds out that I missed that car, he's Scotty. He's going to tell Laura, me. Laura, Laura, Higgins is not going to find out, okay? Now, come on, we're wasting time. Sir, can you use the phone, please? Um, Mother and Daddy's dodgy old friends who had enough of disco for life's music. I said I would be delighted to tell the boys in the band to take a break for a price. <laughs> Wonderful, Tracy. I hired you to raise funds for the cardiac ring, and you're blackmailing people. I am. <laughs> but the first time you get a quarter of a million dollars, it doesn't matter how you get it, only that you get it. Must have been quite an evening for you. Well, Leslie, actually, it was Rick's night. Not only did his fervor and his passion loosen every purse string in the place, but he managed to charm the hardwood board into changing their minds about his appointment, despite all the negative publicity. Um, uh, Tracy, when is your next party going to be? Back up to Rick. He has to be there. Uh, excuse me, huh? Hello. Hello. Oh, yes, of course. I'll accept a collect call from Laura Weber. Uh, Laura? What's wrong? Yes, yes, they're both still here. Well, who do you want to talk to? Okay, just a sec. Uh, it's Laura, and she's um, very upset. She'd like to talk to you, Rick. Hello? No, it doesn't matter what my name is, Mr. Higgins. The important thing is, I'm surprised to see a girl like Laura Weber up here at this hour. I read in the newspaper that the court imposed a very strict curfew on her. Yes, I'm sure it's Laura Weber. I was having dinner here at the lodge. She was seated at the next table. What? No, that is not important either, Mr. Higgins. The point is, I know that you are in charge of this case. Not going to look too good on your record if the judge in charge of Laura Weber's case hears that you knew all about this and didn't do anything about it. Well, of course she's still here. That's why I'm calling. The no thanks necessary, Mr. Hagen. Just doing my civic duty. <coughs> I'm never going to make it home by my curfew. Honey, as long as we know where you are, it's all right. Now, look, has Scotty found somebody to fix the car? He's calling someplace in Brewster right now. The, the man at the front desk gave him a number. Dad, I knew something awful like this was going to happen. Laura, Scotty's car broke down. You couldn't predict that, and we understand. Now, this kind of accident happens. 
I'm just glad it wasn't something more serious, and you should be too. What could be more serious than breaking the rules that the judge set down for me? Honey, you didn't break any rules, not intentionally. Now, look, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Now, listen, is Scotty off the phone yet? No, not yet. All right, your mother and I will stay here at Monica's. You call us back as soon as Scotty finds out something, all right? All right. Okay, and honey, whatever happened was beyond your control. You have no reason to be alarmed. Now, remember that. Good girl. Honey, are you all right? Ray? Is there something wrong with my car? Well, they had finished dinner. They were heading back down the hill, and the car stopped. Now, Scotty has no idea what's wrong. Where did it happen? Uh, Laura thinks it's a couple miles down the mountain. You mean they had to walk all that way back to the lodge? It was the only place where there was a telephone. Oh, poor kid. I mean, you must be exhausted. I'm sure, Gail, and Laura is frantic because she knows that there is no way she's going to be able to get back for that curfew. You're regretted to be John Higgins first thing tomorrow morning, and I'll explain it all. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that. Mitch, I think it'd be better idea to call him right now. Well, Rosalie, it's not like Laura's missing or something. I mean, we know where she is when Scotty gets the car fixed. Should be on. Yes, past Laura's curfew. How do you think it would look if Higgins went by Rick and Leslie's at exactly 9 o'clock tonight and nobody was there? Got your point. I think you're right, Lee. It'll make Laura feel a heck of a lot better. Now, she is more terrified about what Higgins is going to report to Stallman than she is anything else. Right, I'll try to get in touch with him right now. Do you have a phone book? Oh, Lee, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, honey. We'll see you as soon as we can. Goodbye. Oh, and Laura, don't worry. As long as Rick and I know where you are, everything will be all right. I told her that we would drive right up there. Leslie, Scotty is handling everything. Now, I don't see what the two of us driving all the way up to the cabin are going to do. Well, well, what if, if there's something really seriously wrong with the car? What if he can't find anybody to fix it? All right, then we'll go up there. In the meantime, Laura's going to have Scotty call us just a second he hears from that garage and he knows what's happening. Who is he calling? John Higgins. He thinks it's better that we try and reach him tonight instead of taking a chance that somebody tells him about it. Of course, yes. Monica, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we're going to have to leave, but... Being as worried as I am, I'd sure put a damper on the party anyway. Well, there's no answer. Higgins' apartment he must be out for the evening. Okay, let's... We'll just go right now, okay? Oh, Leslie, right. wait a minute. It's going to take at least an hour to get up to the lodge. I mean, Scotty could have the car fixed by the time you get there. Yeah, Monica's right, Leslie. Look, why don't you just give it a few more minutes until they get back to you? Because Scotty was going to call back after he got in touch with the garage. That doesn't mean he's going to find anyone who can fix the car at this hour. Uh, Leslie, I really, I can't imagine anything seriously wrong with the car. I just had it gone over completely I'm, last week. I'm sure, Lee. It's just something just happened, that's all. But even if they were to get it fixed, it could happen again. It could stop on the way down the hill. Leslie, we'll go. If Scotty has it fixed, then we'll follow him down the hill. If not... Well, then we'll bring him back ourselves, all right? I'll get your coats. Thank I'll you. call Scotty. Thank sure you. Oh, it's all right. Laura knows we're coming. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm sure Scotty is as anxious about Laura not missing her curfew as she is. And if they have to get the car fixed, they just might take off. Oh, yeah, well, whatever you think is best. Here's your oh, coat, Mr. I'm so sorry about that. We understand. Rick, I want to thank you. Monica, would you please let us make it up another night? Oh, I'm, I apologize. Rick, I'm sorry. don't worry about anything except getting Scotty and Laura home safely. Thank you. Mitch, you won't forget to call tomorrow and explain to Higgins what happened. Yeah. No, no, I won't forget. And don't worry, he'll call. He'll understand everything. I know it. Well, I know Laura will feel a lot better. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Why, when you want the job done right, you come to a pro. <laughs> <laughs> 